Anyway, we need a bed. That's what I was going to do, and then I thought about making a different bedroom, and then I remembered I need wood for the freezer, and we're almost out of wood, and then I need wood for a bedroom, and... Ugh. Oh. Right. Furniture. Wood bed, just a second bed right there, I'll be fine. You're not a constructor. I should probably make you a at least four constructors so you do it at the very end of your queue. Just to get that going. It's a little slow going at the start, but um, it'll very quickly pick up. Trust me on that. It gets stressful as hell. So you're wondering, we're out of wood now. The plant cutting will be done by... We'll have you do it after constructing, I guess. I don't have any mining queued up, so it's sort of a... You're just on like permanent time kill mode right now. But I would like to get the freezer up, get the food out of here. The door opening sound effect has a lot of white noise to it, and it's really distracting for me. Um, let's see, if I were to mine... I guess just steel is always a cool thing to mine. So we'll just start mining into that, I think, here in, in a little bit. But uh, definitely get some wood first. Yeah, see, like, here we got, uh, you slept in the cold, that's minus four. That's gonna last basically all day. Eight without a table, that lasts most of the day. Another minus four. You're liking Bionic Body Park because you want to be Bionic, so that's gonna be there forever. That's another minus four. Shared bedroom, uh, minus five. Uh, that's up until you get their own bedroom. Disturbed sleep just because something made noise nearby, probably the monkey or the door opening or somebody else walking in through the room that stacks up. That's always minus six, though, whether it's times one or times a thousand. And you're just generally feeling terrible because reasons. So it's just like all these things add up and it's like, ugh. If it wasn't for a fine meal. Where? Does these count as fine meals now? I never used to. But if it wasn't for like the very low expectations or the new Colony Hope, which is only a temporary one, um, you'd be in a pretty bad mood. And when we get down to that hash, you risk a soft break. And when you get down to that hash, you risk a hard break. However, freezer's done. So we'll set this to uh, zero C's freezing. We'll get a bit of overlap in there. Minus five C. One freezer should be able to handle it okay. We got the temperature down here in the right corner. It follows whatever the mouse is on. So in this room that we're on right now, six Celsius or centigrade, whichever. We're at minus five, really no problems at all. So we'll do a stockpile in there. For strictly, we'll do critical priority so it overrides this stockpile. Clear all, it will be just raw food. And the package survival meals, I suppose. Will those last basically forever, but that's fine. We'll just move them in there just so they're out of the way, I guess. And eventually, we'll do a uh, like a butcher table type thing and a cook stove type thing and a dining table. And then we'll have a bedroom um, set up up here and we'll do a prison. And and yeah, I like having separate buildings for things. It turns into sort of like a, a little village type thing. I've been doing it for a few offices now and I really quite like it. it. It beats a lot of people doing the like one giant building that looks kind of ugly or even inside of a mountain, they do a vault type thing. And, uh, it's just personal preference. So here we got the one person. It's dude with knife. Red fox got into a fight with a squirrel. Oh, it's bleeding a little bit from it. That'll be fine. It'll heal up, I think. Um, but guy with knife. It's the first attack that you always put up with. It usually happens a few days into it. And this is a person who will very likely um, just get knocked out so we can take them prisoner. Which means I need to do a uh, actual prison room. Which I forgot about. So we'll just do that one. Prisoner rooms are... They have to be off on their own. Because if you... If I put one of these for prisoners... Um, yeah, prisoners and counters can't sleep in the same room. We also can't eat anywhere near the prison. So it would basically render this entire room useless. And bleh. bleh, bleh. So we'll just... Uh, we'll throw it in there for now. And we'll build a prison later on. I didn't think he'd be coming at us quite this early. But let's get ready for it. We got uh, two people. They're both fairly accurate. They're both careful shooters. We were going for, I think, the cooler. Yeah, igniting cooler. So we'll see if we can catch up to you over there. Oh, headshot straight off the bat. 
Damn. And there we go. Are you actually worth taking prisoner is the question. It's a third person, which is always a cool thing, but sometimes they're just that bad. Or sometimes the wounds that you gave them while bringing them down, like, you know, shooting them in the head. Although it looks like the gunshot was actually just a jaw shot, so nothing too bad. Alright, yeah, sometimes you, like, hit them in the head and you can, like, cause actual brain damage to them, and that really sucks when it happens. Okay, well, um... I guess we'll have you. Um, you're a nudist? Yeah. So strip them and then capture them. They can go about your business, do whatever it was you were doing up there. Now capture them. So now they're a prisoner. And we have to feed them and talk to them and take care of them and stuff like that. Otherwise they get into a really shit mood. They can still break. And prison breaks are a thing in this game. I have yet to have a prison break. They seem to be somewhat rare. But when they happen, apparently they're really terrifying. But recruitment difficulty 51%, usually this is going to be like up in the 80s or 90s. So really low chance of recruiting them under best circumstances, but 51 is like definitely totally okay. So give them herbal medicine or worse, we don't really have, well we have fantastic medicine actually. Actually, yeah, go ahead and use like proper medicine on them. Oh, and she's working on it. Oh, okay. You're... Doctoring. Medicine, two. Medicine, one. Oh, we're both horrible at it. Um... Yeah, I'll just tap R twice. Um, R is the hotkey to bring them into combat. So bring them into combat and then taking them out of combat sort of refreshes what they're currently doing. You were going over to work on Kyle prior to me allowing that type of medicine to be used on him. So I quickly just hit R twice to refresh it. So they're going back to treat them. Oh, hey, he needs medicine. Oh, okay, we'll get the medicine and all that. That's all that is. If anybody out there is new to the game and wonder what the uh, what that's all about. We'll use the medicine to, uh, to hopefully make up for our terrible medicine skill. Because if we treat this guy poorly, the wounds could get infected, and the infection will spread, and then it'll take more medicine to manage the infection, or we might just have to cut off a body part. And then that's considered surgery, and then there could be a surgery mistake, and oh, such a headache. It's a pain in the ass, so just use medicine, hopefully it works out okay. But otherwise, always, always, always at the very least friendly chat. Talking to prisoners gives them a mood boost, like a pretty significant mood boost just for being spoken to. Um, always a good thing to at least friendly chat them, even if you plan on just releasing them later on. Which, releasing a uh, prisoner is a good thing to get the relationship up with whatever faction they belong to. So, like, this is Strife Rig, who is the pirate band at minus 92, so I could heal this guy up and release him if I didn't really want him, and that bring us down to minus 72, I believe. I think it's plus 20 if they're healthy, or maybe just 15. Might be 15, but anyway. That's, that's something else you could do. But if you at the very least talk to them, that uh, greatly reduces the chances of them losing their shit and um, prison break and all that jazz. But I'm, I'm actually wanting to take this guy's simple chat and recruit. So whoever is the warden will get around to feeding them and trying to recruit them and all that jazz. Hopefully that happens pretty soon because I don't want to keep them in the battery room for too long. It's a really bad spot for prisoners. Freezer's done. Um, chopping down trees for the wood, that's good. We'll go for... Fairly a large bedroom here. I usually don't do large bedrooms, like, ever. In fact, I still don't think this is large enough, but we'll see. That's... yeah, that's, that's six. This is only five interior. Made them a bit different in size. I don't know, hopefully that's not cramped for them. I don't think that'll be cramped. But they get a bit particular with bedroom sizes sometimes. Let's, um, let's make it a bit larger. That'll probably be okay. And then we can just pick up and move the beds afterwards. So structure with doors there and there. So there's that. 
And then eventually we'll be doing a prison. Probably just like, I don't know, over here or something like that. I don't know. I don't want to queue up too much right now. We'll have to haul all of these stones. All of them, even these. And we'll haul them. Over here. Stones make decent cover. So, by putting that as a critical priority for chunks, stone chunks specifically, uh, they'll move those into there and that'll sort of act as a not fantastic but better than nothing wall slash cover for us to use. So if we get attacked from the east, they got something there to protect us. So how are you doing? Whoa. Hungry, it's ugly. Do I have a, uh... Yeah, I got a word and it's NG. NG feeding meal to Kyle. Okay, cool. Hey, yeah, cause your, uh, your hunger's getting there. You're in a really ugly environment. It's really uncomfortable cause you're sleeping on a dirt floor. Sanders from between a couple batteries. You're still in a bit of pain. You're a pessimist. Ugh, you're just in prison. You're feeling bad. It's dark in here. Ah, oh, it's shit. Life is hell for him for a couple days, but it'll sort out. Like I said, even just talking to him is a fantastic thing. Oh, and happily nude because I, I stripped him and he's a nudist, so that's always a cool thing. Looks like actually talking to him doesn't do very much now. Ugh. It always used to. It was convinced by Warden and it would really stack up high. Oh well. I went ahead and named people. The uh, sort of the thing that I do for people who support me on Patreon, PayPal, Google Wallet, etc. Uh, I put their name in game if they want. So I've got a sort of a list of the Patreon supporters and all that and I randomized the list and uh, put them in when I can for the games like Rimworld, XCOM, etc, etc. And the first couple names that I had this time were Dragonfly and Jack Spratt. And Kyle will, whenever we recruit him, if we recruit him, well, really whoever we have next, uh, is Jude Starbright. So that's that. The list is pretty long. Uh, I don't think we'll be getting enough condos for me to get through the Patreon list. But if you want a colonist and you're not a Patreon supporter, please just leave a comment, let me know. And uh, if we happen to get like 30, 40, 50 colonists somehow, I'll I'll add you in when I can. Although, like I said, I, I don't think we'll be getting that many. Usually, as of late, I've been capping off at like five to six colonists. It's been pretty bad, but you never know. Then when that gets done, we'll move the beds up. We'll floor it up eventually, probably with just the decent wood floor. Looks nice, cheap to do, fast to lay down, easy to work with. And then they'll have their own bedrooms. And that will be... Slept in the cold and shared bedroom probably gone. Slept in the cold, I'm assuming, is just because, yeah, it's, it's pretty cold outside. Yeah, it's 7 degrees C outside, 4 degrees C inside here. Should probably... Oops, install a heater. Put it, uh... We'll put it up there. That'll be alright. Carbopods. The game just generating stuff for me here. A lot of corn. Like, a lot of a lot of corn. 221 corn. I'll... I'll go for it. May as well. Also a nice turkey here that I could probably hunt or tame. Go for taming. Minimal handling skill 2. Hmm. Male turkey. I would need a female turkey too. Maybe one day, get a turkey farm going. That'd be a good thing. How's Kyle doing? We're still taking care of you. Kind of cold and present. Yeah, it's a really bad spot to be. <laughs> I don't have a prison for you yet. He's doing generally okay, and we got people visiting. 
some more traders here. And there you go, some pemmican. Tastes bland, but not offensive. Lasts a long time without refrigeration. So how does that compare to paste? Probably a bit better than paste. Better than paste, lasts longer, I don't know. You can get, if you don't have, because normally you don't start with as many packaged survival meals I do just because that was the, that's the sort of challenge that I went with. Um, but ordinarily, if you don't have a cook for like decent cooking, you could get the nutrient paste dispenser, which does exactly as it sounds like. You throw stuff in and it turns into paste and you eat paste. It's really not that great. It actually gives you a negative mood line, I'm pretty sure, for having paste. It's like minus five. So not great for long term, but for like just straight away, just so you don't die. It's a really good thing. It'll take a couple trips to get all that, but um, that's a lot of corn to have. Which means that we don't need to be worrying I, I can't even really be farming right now. I mean, it, it's so cold outside. Like, I'm pretty sure you set up the farms a little bit ago. But it, I don't think it actually took. It's just, it's too hot. And in fact, it's only going to be getting, or uh, it's too cold. And it's only going to be getting colder. We're in the middle of summer, so we're going to be hitting autumn soon. So just get rid of the growing zones. We'll have to do a, either an indoor growing zone with heaters to keep it warm or hydroponics at some point with research. One of those two. Which research I need to be doing. I need to be doing research here pretty soon too. After bedroom, after I get a bedrooms and prison slash hospital set up, I think I'll do research. Yeah, I think we'll go for something like that. And whoever gets down here first. Dragonfly social two. Social too, okay. The better your social skill compared to whoever you're talking to, the better the prices will be. So because this guy is social four, um, the prices are going to be probably about normal, actually. He's not that much higher than I am. Probably trade some of this coin. Yeah, I can actually just give you a lot of this coin that we're finding. Which is pretty tempting just for the extra money. Uh, yeah, just give them like a hundred. Oh, fuck it. hundred. Uh, it'll be like 170 something. Sure, we'll go for that. We'll take most of their money. Can never have too much. We need one more component for that, so we should be able to get that done. We won't be sleeping in the cold anymore. And then I wonder if the one freezer's or uh, cooler's gonna be enough for the freezer or not. I might need a second one at some point. Maybe. I think it's like just cold enough outside that this one guy's gonna be okay, actually. And one heater seems to be doing the trick here. This construction field is really, really not okay. <sighs> construction two, construction nine. Dragonfly, I'm going to have you not construct. Feel free to repair and plant cut, but otherwise just don't. And Jack Spratt, I'm going to have you just go ahead and construct. Don't worry about plant cut. Never mind, we're out of wood. Okay, yeah, because you're already set up like that. Okay, uh, continue on. I don't really want to use the steel that I've got right now. So just... Uh, Dragonfly will chop down the trees while you build with the logs, I guess. A little slow going, but we'll get there in the end. I'm considering going for the field generator for the time being, because I don't need that much power. And then what this will do is it'll replace the solar panel, but this is kind of a constant supply of, of power throughout the base, so I don't have to worry about batteries, because I only have the batteries because during the night we're not getting power from the solar panel. So we end up draining from the batteries, you know, all that stuff. And the fuel generator, though, just generates a constant thousand watts so long as you have wood in it to burn. And a full a full load in this thing used to be about a week or so. I'd imagine it's not that much different. So if I go for this for the time being, 
would also heat this room too, which is a nice added effect, but I don't think I'll, uh, I don't think I'll go for that. If it generates heat, I think we'd be okay to put it. I think we'd be okay to put it in there. So let's do that. We'll get that built up. We'll load it with a little bit of wood, which there's definitely no shortage of. It'll provide heat, and then... Oh, right, I don't have wood. Oh. What I'll do is I'll build a little hallway here, and I'll do a couple vents in the back of the bedrooms, and then the heat from the uh, wood furnace will effectively passively warm the rooms. I just don't know how much heat these generate is the thing. And I don't know what to do with this monkey. I can train it for obedience and release, so basically I can use it as sort of a war monkey, but uh... <sighs> they're not that great at combat and just one doesn't help me much. Yeah, still a thousand watts. The fuel is only a quarter of the way there, two days, five hours, so a full load is about a week still. So, no problem there. And I assume we have... We don't have ward yet? Come on, Jack. Come on, you got this. And Kyle's taken care of still. No, needs food. Our warden is... I think maybe Dragonfly. Okay, you know what? It's time. I ignored doing this before because it's not a huge issue, but... Um, it's getting to be because we're at 11th hour now and we're still not getting shit done. So this is the timetable thing. It's basically just setting specific hours and uh, time periods for which you do things like joy, work, and sleep, namely. So since we're, since we're not nocturnal, I don't need to adjust sleep very much. Though I will have people uh, wake up a little bit earlier. I like having people wake up doing a good bit of joy and then hitting the work. And then a little bit of a dead zone for anything, just in case they need to go to bed early, um, polish up on joy, sometimes things happen, we get attacked, I recruit somebody into uh, combat and... Um, recruit somebody into combat? What the hell? <laughs> I, I draft people, I think is the word I was looking for. And uh, it, it throws their entire schedule off, so I like having a little bit of anything going on there for it. And I took a little bit of their sleep away. We'll see if that's okay or not. So now basically they'll wake up, do the joy, eat, stuff like that. Actually, I think they'll eat and then joy. And uh, if they don't need joy, then they'll just like go on and continue on with work. So, no problem. Come on, Kyle. 11% chance. Uh looking at local wildlife to see if I should even bother with much taming. There's so much diversity out there, I kind of want to try it. Get a couple foxes going on, and... The best thing about animals is if you can find one that's actually got a really good trainable intelligence, you can actually teach them to haul. And they'll just sort of automatically go out into the world and, and pick up stuff that they're allowed to go to. And bring them back. And it's great because some animals... There's carrying capacity that's associated with everything. Your standard colonist um, is 75, unless they have like injuries. You know, if they're missing an arm, obviously it's not going to be that high. But a healthy colonist, 75. Uh, this monkey, it's too dumb to haul. But if I were to be able to force it to haul uh, through uh, the like, developer console or something like that, it'd only be able to carry 26, so 26 wood, which isn't a lot, but it helps because that's less that we have to haul. Uh, some things like elephants can carry a couple hundred. Muffalo, an example. 150. So when they go out and they collect steel or wood, they can carry 150 of it, which is pretty awesome. Trainable intelligence intermediate, though. I don't think... No, I'm pretty sure they have to be um, advanced in order for you to teach them to haul. But mufflos are still cool because they, they do grow a... I don't think it'll actually show you until you tame them. They actually grow sort of a, uh, a wool coat, so you can grow buffalo wool effectively through that. They also have milk that you can use to cook with, um, and they're a great source of food as well. So they're a nice sort of all-around thing to tame. 
get a nice farm going for. They're easy to take care of. They just eat hay grass and all that. It's quick and easy to grow. What the fuck is that? A megatherium? What the sh What the- What the- A type of ground sloth. Megatheria are giant, solitary herbivores. Long extinct after being wiped out by the natives of Earth's America continent, the ground sloth was later brought back using advanced cloning and artificial gestators. Okay, carrying capacity 300. Okay, melee DPS 9. That's a lot. Um, 22 damage. Yeah, that's... That's pretty good. That's that's a little more than most gunshots. Wow. So, trainable intelligence advanced, so you could teach it to haul. However, minimum handling skill 9. So, yeah, because of its, its wildness. Hmm, life expectancy 20, it's already 17 years. Hmm. Wow. And they they might attack upon fail the chance. Damn. Well, I don't have anybody for handling. That's something I want to keep an eye out for, because big things like that are great to have. Especially since it's smart, so it can actually haul, too. Um, before I waste a steel with... It's actually pretty nice outside. 20 degrees Celsius outside, so we don't need heaters. What will we will at, at night when it gets cold? Oh well. We'll see how much heat this actually generates before I bother with the uh, vents. But this is a good way to heat multiple rooms. I used to do it for a little while, and... Uh, basically, it's just it's big and ugly. At the time, I was getting like 8 to 10 colonists, or sometimes even more. And doing this type of thing with the back hallway means that you've got this... It's just this giant, ugly, nasty thing. Uh, I never liked it. So I tried reducing room size, doing uh, shared bedrooms, and all sorts of stuff throughout the alphas. And people yell at me because I'm doing it wrong, but I'm mostly just experimenting. But I, I don't think they knew. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how many colonists I actually end up getting. I don't think I'll be getting very many, so this might work out. We don't actually have anybody for animals, do we? No, not really. Sort of Jack. He's at least interested in it so he can get good at it. Yeah, I got handling four for him. Yeah. Just in the off chance I feel like doing handling this early. It is a bit early for it. Well, hopefully we get to this guy pretty soon. He'd be great to have, especially with a social of 10. He's miles ahead of us, so he'll be an excellent trader. He'll be a great warden. Uh, with his high social skill, we'll be getting better prices. We'll have a better chance to recruit people. Um, he's not really that great at much else. Chemical fascination, rather than interest. He'll consume much more. I see. Well, uh, you're pretty fantastic Jude Starbright, I think. Just sort of worked out that way, but you're also a nudist and a pessimist. You're just, you're always going to be drinking, basically. Always. Because pessimist, the mood effect is going to be reducing. Is this going to be a constant minus six? So if he wakes up someday and just generally feels terrible for minus 10, that's minus 16 right off the bat. Ugh. And tribes people. Okay, only two of them. So I guess I'll explain why I hate tribes so much. The way the game does this is as time goes on, it throws things more and more intense at you. In the case of attackers, it's usually people with better skills, with better equipment, and all that stuff. But tribes can only have really basic weaponry. They can only have bows and clubs and, and uh, pilas, which they're not bad weapons uh, at all. But because the game considers them to be a bit low end, because they're they're terrible compared to like assault rifles and laser rifles and stuff like that. Because of that, instead of making them better, it just adds more of them. So eventually we'll get to the point where if we're still hostile with the tribe, we'll get to the point where we'll have, uh, like if we're attacked by a pirate band, we'll only have a good, I don't know, six or seven people to fight. Whereas when we get attacked by a tribe, it'll be like 19 or 20. 
I wish I was exaggerating those numbers, but I'm not. I've been attacked by that many people. When you only have four dudes and you refuse to do kill zones, it gets tough. But just two guys, we should be okay. Are they... Oh, they're not even attacking right now. Man. What a tease. I thought they were attacking straight away. Sort of used to it. Sometimes they'll attack straight away. Sometimes they hang around for a little while. If you have mortars, um, you can bombard them really quickly. Or you can just head out and kill them straight away if you want to. If I had that sniper rifle from a while back, um, I could go over there and pick them off because I can outrange them. But I don't, so I can't. And we need to chop a lot more wood. Just absolute... Just absolute loads of it. There. <laughs> That'll keep you busy forever. And reinstall this bed. Throw it up here. Hopefully this turns into like a luxurious bedroom for you guys. I don't know. 